Ja, willkommen zurück im CBS-Kanal. Ich mache es ganz kurz. Es geht weiter äh, mit fünf Leuten, die werden über das Thema Mail to Jail reden. Uh, next talk will be in English, so uh, Mail to Jail is the subject of the, of the next talk. And uh, yeah, welcome in the stream. We can't hear, uh, I can't, I can't hear him. Hi, um, yeah, mute yourself, as I just said. I'm McFly. As you probably know, this topic is uh, always close to my heart because with Milliways, we uh, always have a stand trying to motivate people to send mail to jail. Um, this doesn't work properly uh, this time with the virtual conference, so we decided to give a talk about this. Um, yeah, um, I have uh, with me Squidget, who will start out. Um, doing an introduction, and then Stefan from the Germans, uh, Ryan and Barrett, uh, giving in you an idea why uh, it is important to support people that are sitting in jail and why, uh, why it is so valuable in jail to get all of those mails. With this, um, we have some slides. That don't work. Do you see my slides? Yes. So, Squidget. Hello. So this is going to be a real quick talk about sending mail to prisoners. Um, sending mail to prisoners is one of the easiest and most concrete ways that you can support people who are in prison. Um, one of the biggest reasons that you want to send mail to people in prison is that there's a lot of downtime in prison. Um, sending mail is uh, one of the ways that you can fill that time in prison. Um, in prison, not, not forgotten. Um, keeps and uh, studies have actually shown that people who are better connected to those on the outside have a better outcome once they are released. Um, this is a really great way to just keep people connected. Um, it also uh, does a really great job of just letting people know what's going on in the outside world. Um, a lot of times news is kind of hard to come by uh, when you're in prison. Um, things like magazines and newspapers and just news in general can sometimes be really hard to come by when you're in prison. So when you write somebody, when you tell them about things that are going on in the outside world, that's really important to them. Um, so uh, sending mail, again, that's one more reason why it's just really important and really good to send mail to prisoners now. Um, prisons often have really, really niche rules about how you send mail. Um, there are general rules that you do want to follow. The first thing, don't talk about anything illegal. You don't want to say anything that you don't that you're not going to say in front of a judge, a jury, police, or prosecutors. Obviously, all mail that is sent to prisons is screened. It's screened in the mailroom before it is given 
to the prisoner that you are sending it to. So obviously be smart. Don't talk about um, anything illegal that you do. Um, and in that same vein, uh, some prisoners also have specific topics that they can and can't talk about. Um, sometimes a prisoner can't talk about things related to their case. They can't talk about things that um, if they're a part of a group case, uh, some prisoners can't talk about uh, their co-defendants and things like that. So you really do want to check um, about what they can and can't talk about, because even if they're not talking about it, if you send something to them that is prohibited, they can get in trouble for it. Uh, the other thing that you want to do is, as the slide says, include a return address in the body of your letter as well as on the on as well as on the envelope um, some prisons will not accept letters if there is not a return address on the envelope itself but if you want an answer back you're going to want to include a return address on the letter as well because sometimes envelopes just don't get to the person you're writing to. So just somewhere on the letter, you're gonna wanna include your return address. Um, the other thing, don't include anything in your letter unless otherwise directed. That means no blank paper, no stamps, uh, no money of any kind. Um, in a lot of places, especially in the federal system, these are not allowed. Um, there are ways that you can help prisoners obtain these things, mostly by putting money into their commissary account. They do have to buy these things separately at com at com. Sorry, in some places, you are not a. I'm sorry. In some places, you can include these things, but most places, especially in the federal system, you are not allowed to include these things. They will not reach the prisoner, so don't send them. And finally, you're going to want to be very patient when waiting for a return letter. Uh, sometimes mail gets held. Sometimes prisoners just don't have the money to buy things like paper, stamps, pens, envelopes, things like that. They just don't have the resources to buy these things from the com, the com, com, sorry. So you're just going to want to be patient and don't get mad if a prisoner doesn't write back. They just might not have the money. So, and then we get more into the little niche rules of writing to a prisoner in the federal system. Um, the federal system started rolling out very, very specific rules of how you can write to a prisoner. And these rules are horrible. They are draconian. And as always, especially in prison, the cruelty is the point. Um, these rules include things like you are going to want to write on white paper only and send it in a white envelope only. Lined notebook paper is fine, but any colored paper, any off-white paper, that is not allowed. Your letter will be rejected. You're going to want to write in blue or black ink only. Any colored pencils, any markers, any crayons, those are not allowed. They will cause your letter to be rejected. Uh, greeting cards and postcards were previously allowed. They are not anymore. You're not going to want to send them. Do not affix anything to your paper or to the envelopes. That means no stickers, no glitter, nothing. Uh, even a return address label that is a sticker. Scents of any kind on your paper. That means scented markers, scented pens. Uh, don't spray your letters with perfume. None of that. Uh, that will cause your letter to uh, Jeremy, actually, uh, Jeremy Hammond, somebody who I've done prison support for, um, somebody actually uh, had very strong scent of spices on their letter because they were using it, uh, they were writing it when they were cooking that actually caused the letter to be rejected. Um, but sometimes, even if you follow all of the rules, 
uh, your letter will still be rejected. Uh, I included these two tweets because sometimes it just all comes down to who's in the mailroom on a certain day. Um, Jeremy was sent uh, the exact same book at two different prisons. One prison accepted it, one prison rejected it. Uh, why? Who knows? Uh, Jeremy has had dozens, if not hundreds, of letters and books rejected for various reasons. Uh, as you can see, in 2016, he was allowed to both get and read Hacker, Ho Hacker Hoaxer Whistleblower Spy by Biela Col Coleman at FCI Manchester, which is a medium security prison. Um, but in 2018, at FCI My Milan, which is curiously enough, a low security pr prison, um, that same book was rejected and he was not allowed to receive it. Um, so again, uh, mail restrictions are often capricious and subject to, honestly, who's in the mailroom on any particular day. Um, again, and some other things that you can do to help prisoners, books, another great way to help them. Oftentimes, uh, books must be sent directly from a publisher or distributor such as amazon.com. I know we all hate that, but unfortunately it is oftentimes the only way that books are allowed to be sent. Um, sending money to a prisoner allows them to purchase things like pen, paper, stamps so that they can write, write back to you, but it also allows them to um, purchase phone time, purchase computer time, so they can, again, another way that they can keep in touch with friends and loved ones. Uh, putting money on a prisoner's books in the federal system, easiest way, using Western Union. If they're in the state system, there are so many ways that different state or county prisons uh, put money on prisoner's books. You're honestly, if someone's in the state system, you're just going to have to look up how their particular prison does does it because there are just so many ways. Uh, J JPay is a big one. It's honestly just down to what prison a particular person is in. So that is a quick rundown of how to write a prisoner. Okay, next we have, uh, thank you. Um, next we have Steffen uh, who will do this in German and uh, I guess the translation team will um, have to swap this around in the article, uh, in the final uh, download. So, Steffen, uh, you've been in, uh, du bist uh, 1988, hast du für 68 Tage quasi für den CCC im Knast gesessen. Ja, ich war eingeladen zu einer Sicherheitskonferenz als Eröffnungsredner und wurde dann gleich am Flughafen wegverhaftet und dann nach zwei Tagen äh, in diesen typischen französischen gläsernen Polizeizellen haben die mich dann erstmal für 68 Tage weggepackt. Äh, ja, also aus meiner Erfahrung, äh, Knastpost äußerst wichtig. Ich hatte den riesigen Vorteil, dass ich halt einer der ersten äh, war in Europa, die äh, wegen Hackergeschichten weggesperrt wurden und äh, auch ein großes Medienecho und dementsprechend habe ich also dreimal am Tag Post bekommen in Frankreich. Morgens äh, kamen halt die Zeitungen an. Äh, das Tollste war einmal äh, ein Päckchen vom Playboy selber mit einem ganzen Haufen Playboy-Magazine drin, die ich dann natürlich im ganzen Trakt verteilen konnte. Überhaupt alles an Zeitungen konnte ich verteilen und das hat mir das Leben sehr erleichtert, weil ja niemand legt sich mit jemandem an, der den halben Trakt halt mit äh, Zeitungen versorgt. Aber das äh, für mich Wichtigste äh, waren Briefe von Leuten, die selber schon mal im Knast waren oder eine ähnliche Erfahrung gemacht haben. Weil äh, da merkt man halt, dass es auch draußen Leute gibt, die das verstehen. Viele reagieren halt hektisch und panisch, wenn dann jemand äh, mal weggesperrt wird. Und im Knast läuft die Zeit halt anders. Du rechnest nicht in Stunden und Minuten, sondern eher in Tagen, Wochen und Monaten. Es ist also so eine Entschleunigung dabei. Und ähm, dadurch gibt es natürlich auch Missverständnisse, äh, die sich so mit der Zeit aufbauen. Ähm, hat bei mir dann sechs Monate nach der Knastzeit äh, gedauert, bis ich dann auch wieder mich geerdet hatte sozusagen. Aber die Post hat mir sehr viel geholfen, 
ich habe auch all diese ganzen Briefe noch, die ich damals gekriegt habe. Das ist also so ein dicker Stapel. Ich habe den nur in meinem Archiv jetzt nicht gefunden. Aber es hat mir sehr geholfen und äh, selbst wenn das 32 Jahre her ist, an dieser Stelle doch mal ein Dank an alle, die damals mir was geschickt haben. Dankeschön, Steffen. Um, and for the last two, we'll uh, switch back to English, unless Ipunk has a question there, then please just jump in. Okay, then uh, the system is kind of annoying. Um, uh, Barrett is doing the next talk while I'm trying to get back to the system and move the slides to the next side. So, um, yeah, there it goes. Hello, <clears throat> thank you for having me. So I did four years in the feds from 2012 to 2016. Uh, it's evolved into anonymous uh, goings on back in the day. Uh, so obviously you know as i think has been noted already state and federal prisons in the u.s differ in terms of their rules state prisons differ among themselves new york state california state texas state uh they'll have individual rules regulations for all this stuff and as has already been alluded to these rules and regulations are often uh moot uh what, what it comes down to is the whim of those uh, who are placed in charge uh this is true in most facets of american life it's typically true in the prison systems Uh, someone such as uh, Squiggle here, uh, a, a support contact, is a, is a fine thing for a prisoner to have uh, for a number of reasons, uh, but, but especially when it comes to doing communications, initiating communications with a prisoner. Uh, a person like that can, can you know, be in charge of, of letting people know what the regulations are, where they'd move to, um, and, and sort of facilitating uh, all of the different difficulties and barriers that can arise uh, when dealing with the prison system. Uh, and they can also, you know, be warn or, or make, make people aware of particular circumstances that might need to be uh, considered when writing to a particular prisoner at a particular time. Uh, these are, you know, these go beyond summary. It's hard to summarize what these issues are. There's just so many of them uh, and they can change. And so that's always an important thing to have. Uh, I'm actually, uh, the writing, writing, if you are writing to prisoners, uh, there are aspects of that kind of, that kind of activity that I feel can be thought of more, that can be kind of, can be refined and enhanced in order to achieve more of the end results at the same time as achieving the basic end of supporting that prisoner in a way. And, uh, I'll go into that in a bit, but, uh, to the extent you are simply writing to a prisoner, that is your goal, uh, There are a number of ways that this does help, aside from simply giving the prisoner, you know, a moral, uh, you know, a morale boost. Uh, prisoners who receive regular mail, uh, they gain respect uh, among other prisoners, uh, and that can be more or less, more or you know, useful in some circumstances than others. Uh, it can help them to establish authority. Uh, it can help them to. Uh, it can help to give the sense to the staff, administration, and guards that this prisoner has people on the outside that are uh, watching the prisoners back, and that can have a, a great effect uh, in terms of, uh, you know, preventing staff from engaging in, in too much uh, due process violations or abuse. So that's very helpful. Uh, and also to the extent the prisoner is intent on, or might choose to later on, uh, continue their activism within prison, uh, having the respect of other inmates, uh, that prompts inmates to come to them with their problems, Uh, give them, you know, bring them, uh, make them aware of, of issues in the prison they may not be aware of otherwise, and uh, it, it helps to establish trust uh, and, and soft power uh, in a situation which soft power is, is vastly useful, not just for the prisoner, but for the prison itself that may need the prisoner's aid. Uh, a lot of the, a lot of some of the letters that prisoners get are uh, are done in these group, these events held by things like the Anarchist Black Cross and so forth, where they have meetings. Uh, you know, events like once a month to write to prisoners. Uh, these, uh, th there's, uh, it, 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 there's been mixed results from those. Uh, some meetings produce basically letters where it's just all the kind of the same, like, hi, I'm writing to you because I'm at a meeting. I hope everything's are well in there, blah, blah. That's, it's all well and good. But those meetings, in my view, uh, they should involve more guidance 
uh, as to particular contents, you know, of the letter they're writing anyway, uh, that should go to the prisoner. Uh, things like information, as has already been spoken about uh, on events. Uh, there is a particular special case of that kind of thing, of getting, letting you know what's, in the outside, what's going on in the outside world that should be attended to. That is providing tips on potential problems or tip uh, or, or uh, you know, just the things of note that the prisoner may need to be aware of, especially before trial or sentencing. Uh, there is, you know, in some of these cases like mine, there can be a complicated backstory that the prisoner may have very little access to in terms of FBI informants, what's known about them, in terms of like, you know, things that are put out on Twitter and so forth after the arrest uh, that may be useful for the prisoner to know. And that a lawyer, uh, for instance, may not may not recognize uh, as useful, uh, you know, being not conversant with the circumstances. Um, and so, to give you examples of that, uh, there were people who were getting trying to get involved in my uh, in my legal defense, uh, from early on my legal defense network and the activism surrounding that while I was in prison that I didn't you know had no way of knowing about. Uh, one of those people was Cassandra Fairbanks, and I was alerted to this by uh, by you know a, a volunteer of mine from the past who made me aware of who this person was and why the support network should be warned about her. And later on, she went on to work with uh, the Trump people and so forth and uh, has caused a lot of damage in the, in the community at large. Those are the kind of things that a prisoner, you know, oftentimes, even if they have a support person, that support person may not be privy to these things. Uh, and so that is an example of a very useful, impactful thing that you can do when writing a prisoner. Make them aware of those things that there's a chance they're not already aware of and that they should be aware of. Uh, there is, as has also been mentioned, uh, in the federal system and increasingly in other systems, I think state systems as well in the U.S., uh, there's an email system, an ERSATS email system. It's very, it's very uh, hedged in. It's very kind of AOL-ish in terms of it's not actually email. It's, it's very much uh, presided over by, by, by a structure that the BOP, Bureau of Prisons, uh, runs. Uh, that is a great alternative in some cases to letters. Now, you don't get the same impact of that prisoner getting all these, getting all this mail all the time uh, with that. You don't have that visible, like, here's your mound of mail, important prisoner kind of thing that I talked about earlier. But under some circumstances, that can be a more viable uh, method of communicating, uh, again, depending very much on the, on the individual particulars of the case and uh, so forth. But uh, obviously, and when, when it comes to a correspondence, when there's someone, when there's for some reason a prisoner has identified you as someone who they wants to hear more from, uh, and be able to ask questions of, setting getting an email set up at their invitation is a great way to uh, go about things. Uh, likewise, phones, uh, as mentioned, you can put money on uh, prisoners' phones. You can put them on the, on the books directly on their on their accounts at prison. Uh, if you if you write a letter to a prisoner, it might be a good idea if you'd like to put your phone number at the end and tell them you're putting $5 or something on their uh, prison accounts so that if they wish to, they can call you back easily. If not, they can buy some coffee. Um, just depends on how entertaining your letter is, I suppose. Uh, All right. I want to cut you short, but we also need to give Ryan some time, and we have four minutes left. Okay. Uh, books, send books. Um, send books as, as needed, find out the rules, and uh, et cetera. Magazines are great. Um, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'm trying to slide again. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm Jeremy Ryan. I have done 19 of the past 25 months in county jails. Well, minus one week at MCC Chicago, uh, where I got sang to uh, by R. Kelly at night. But uh, outside of that, um, I, it's been for political activism. It's mainly been in county jails. And county jails are significantly worse than prisons, uh, state prisons or federal prisons. That's part of how the American justice system ropes you in. They put you in this horrible environment when you're legally considered innocent. Um, and they put you in this horrible environment to try to get you to cave. Uh, in my federal case, they were trying to get me to cave to a nuclear terrorism charge. Uh, I became the first person to be charged federally under 2332I, acts of nuclear terrorism. And six months into the 16 months, they offered me time served. And uh, they said, just take the terrorism charge. We'll let you out. And uh, I did every day of the next 10 months not being able to get out. They also have horrible medical care. So if people with medical issues need people on the outside able to convey that. Um, there was one time when I had 
I was taking out my contact because they don't give you enough contact lens solution. So I uh, wore them a little bit too aggressively. I was taking it out and lacerated my eye. It took them 18 hours to get me to a hospital as my eye is like bleeding. And, um, and I, it was only because I had people on the outside calling 911 locally and saying that I was, uh, I was needed, you know, medical attention was needed. And obviously they wouldn't go, but it was clogging up the 911 center. Um, but it also just means a lot uh, to get mail. It means a lot for a, a wide variety of reasons. But a lot of these, a lot of people, a lot of activists, they don't get a whole lot of mail. And so it's it, it tends to make them sometimes think, um, you know, if they don't get the national stories, then people don't really write. And so sometimes they think people don't really have their back. And uh, so it can really help to have people say, you know, yeah, you know, we, we know about you. We, we support you. Um, and outside of that, uh, you know, just money on books, there's in particular, particularly in jails, there's these systems like getting out where you can send messages to people in all sorts of jails across the country. Um, some of them, like the guy in uh, Dane County um, that, I, that I had posted, uh, who's currently, he, he's being accused of uh, firebombing the, the police station downtown. Um, but he is in jail and, um, they have, they have a little messaging system called getting out where you can send kind of like instant messages with the, with the inmates. So there's all sorts of ways in all sorts of different places, but regardless, uh, U S jails in particular are horribly shitty and there's nothing, there's literally nothing to do all day, except maybe read a book from the book cart that's been there the whole six months or uh watch whatever someone else is watching on tv um outside of that there's not really a whole lot so you know even just a small thing like a letter helps to break the monotony um and show that you have support um and yeah i can't talk too much about prisons because like i said i only spent one week at mcc chicago on the fed case thing but i was on uh six floor 16 which at the time was the same floor as r kelly and they were making us sing them to sing everybody to sleep it was kind of funny, but either way, um, yeah, uh, thank you for having me and uh, thank you for doing this because I know it's going to make a, a big difference to a lot of people. And um, and that's really what we need. We need people to continue the fight. We need people once they get out of jail to be motivated to get into our prison, to be motivated to continue fighting. Uh, because not everybody is going to necessarily have the same level of resilience as uh, as someone like, say, myself or Barrett um, or, or the other gentleman there. Uh, and sometimes just support will make the difference on whether they'll have that resilience or not. Okay. Uh, thank you all three or all four. Um, I'd like to point out that the Milliways Wiki, and we'll try to attach this link to the talk in some way, um, the Milliways Wiki, we have uh, uh, stories, addresses, and detailed information for people that are sitting in uh, jail at the moment, uh, which include people like, uh, 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 which includes people uh, um, like Reality Winner, um, like Julian Assange, um, and some others that it's important to send mail to. So, uh, and thank you for the CBAS, for Ceban and Ipang for uh, giving us the opportunity to uh, do this here. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you. Uh, thank you, Max Lai. Uh, thanks to the, uh, hi, hi to the Milliways. And uh, yeah, to all the people out there, uh, write some letters to jail. Um, okay, we stop this here now. And uh, the next talk up will be in just four and a half minutes. See you then. Thank you.